A typical part of a workflow within Vectorworks Spotlight will often include importing a DWG or an AutoCAD document. You might be starting with a, a floor plan of the venue space. Down the road, you might be importing CAD documents or DWGs from different suppliers or folks working with you on the project. So rather than import DWGs, I'm actually gonna argue for referencing DWGs. It's a subtle difference in the workflow, but there's actually a lot of benefits that come with it. Let's discuss that. First of all, let's look at importing a DWG into a Vectorworks document. I'm going to create a new Vectorworks document. It's gonna be a blank document. So I'm expecting to not see any classes or any design layers. I'll look at my list of classes and we'll notice the standard classes, dimension and none. That's going to come with any blank document you open in Vectorworks. Next, what I'm going to do is import a DWG into this document, as we might do when we're starting a project. So I'm going to go to File and Import. Import a single DWG. And in this dialog, I'm going to look for a file uh, that is a DWG file. So I might have that in a project folder. So we find our DWG in our project folder. I'm gonna click open. We'll notice that Vectorworks begins the importing process of this DWG. Now I'm gonna take the default settings that are currently set in my options here in Vectorworks Spotlight. Uh, I'm not setting this to any specific customized settings. Um, we're gonna use detected DWG file units in inches and in architectural format in this circumstance. Nothing else in this dialog is selected. So I'm gonna hit return or okay. We'll notice that Vectorworks Spotlight begins importing all of the objects. It looks like 31,000 plus objects in this DWG. Vectorworks is now displaying the DWG that you received from a client or from uh, the venue. Well, we'll also notice that I have my navigation palette open. In the lower right hand corner of my screen, we'll notice that uh, previous to importing the DWG, we actually only had two classes in our document, and now we look at the list and we have quite a few classes. So this is one of the downfalls of importing a DWG into your Vectorworks document. You are infecting your file. Okay, maybe not so bad, but you know if you're really organized in your workflow and deliberate with your team on how to organize your documents with Vectorworks Spotlight, the minute that anyone on that team imports a DWG into your Vectorworks document, they have now infected your document with all of the graphic standards that were set up by a completely different team. What am I talking about? Look at the classes that we have listed here. Let's look at the organization palette. Navigate to classes. And what we see here is just a whole load of classes and the graphic attributes that go along with those classes. Where did these come from? The DWG is built in layers. I'm not talking about layers in Vectorworks, layers in AutoCAD. Well, layers in AutoCAD become classes in Vectorworks. Design layers in AutoCAD control graphic attributes. Well, when we import this DWG into your Vectorworks document, the classes are uh, created from those AutoCAD design layers. And all of these classes now take on the graphic attributes. We've noticed that we've imported all of these classes. Yes, we've got all the geometry that we wanted, but also it's just not organized how we might organize our own geometry. We, we might want geometry in our Vectorworks document to be organized in symbols or groups specific to our team's workflow. If I select all, so Command A, I'm gonna select all of the objects. Let's look at the object info palette. It also includes well, the object info palette shows that our document includes 13,456 objects. Before we started the import process of the DWG, we had zero objects in our drawing area. So as you can see, importing that DWG is gonna come with, well, a lot of baggage. Let's look at the alternate now. First, let's save this Vectorworks document. I'm gonna save it to this project folder that I've created here, and we'll save that. What am I trying to demonstrate? We've saved the file. Now let's look at the file itself. What I wanna demonstrate here is the size of the file. We started with a DWG that was 2.8 megabytes, imported that into our Vectorworks document, and then saved our Vectorworks document. 
Now our Vectorworks document is 12 point not now our Vectorworks document is 12.9 megabytes. Let's take a look at the alternate. Back in Vectorworks, I'm going to close this document. Now I want to create a new document. Say OK just to create a blank document. We're back to where we were at the beginning of this tutorial. We look at the list of our classes. We only have dimension and none. Let's go through the same process of importing that DWG like we did previous. So we'll go to File and Import, Import Single DWG. We're going to locate the DWG that was supplied to us, and we're going to select Open. We have a very similar option here that we've seen before. Notice a check mark box next to Reference. We want to make sure that that is checked because we want to reference in this DWG instead of importing it. The rest of the process after you click OK looks very similar. Watch. Say OK. Vectorworks processes those 31,000 objects. And again, Vectorworks Spotlight tells us that we are successful. So we're going to hit return to say OK to agree with Vectorworks. Yes, it looks like you're successful. And then we want to zoom extents. So Command 6 to zoom extents. And we'll notice that graphically within our drawing area, this looks very similar to the results we, we received previously when we first imported the DWG. The difference now is that if we look at our navigation palette, we'll notice that none of our classes changed in our existing document. Well, once again, we can look at our organization palette and prove that by looking at the classes tab, we see no new classes have been created in Vectorworks. That's great. Organization, it's important when you're working with the team. So uh, it's great that another team isn't messing up our internal organization. So no classes have been imported. We say OK. And I want to select all. So Command A, select all. And it looks like we just have one object here in our drawing area. And that object happens to be a DWG referenced. We'll look up there in the object info palette. It's just a referenced DWG. Well, this is great because we didn't import, we didn't infect our file with all of the graphic attributes and classes from um, anybody else. And also, we only have one object in this drawing area to work with. And if you're looking to import the geometry from these CAD files and actually use the line work and that kind of thing, uh, well, importing and not referencing might actually work for you. But oftentimes, we're only bringing in a DWG for graphic reference and many of us plan to just go ahead and draw on top of that with our own elements. So in that circumstance, referencing in a DWG might actually be more beneficial to you than importing the DWG wholly if you're concerned about organization and graphic standards. There's one more thing that we should consider. We peeked at this at the end of the last import. So I'm going to save this file. So again, this is just the untitled document. I'm going to save this file. We want to save it into this project folder that I've created. And I'm going to call this one DWG reference. And we save it. Notice that the DWG reference, while it is still a larger file than the DWG itself that we're referencing into the Vectorworks document, it is actually significantly smaller than the DWG import Vectorworks file that we've created. So in a way, our workflow is saving us a little bit of file space, but it's also might save us a really big headache in our team workflow if we just reference in that DWG and apply things to our own graphic standards as we might wish to internally. So give that a try in your workflow and see if that keeps things nice and tidy for you.